Hello YouTube. Um, I am somewhere very special today. Um, I was up at 4am to get out here and boy can I tell you it's worth it. And yeah there are, there are six Victorian coastal artillery batteries here um, which have been supplemented and modified in, through the Second World War as well so there's absolutely lots to see with some incredible original features. Uh, the Victorian batteries were all armed with the um, 7 inch um, rifled muzzle loader RML um, which all, all are still in position. You can see the um, side, the racetrack around the outside the carriage would have would have sat on and the um, the large cannon in the middle which was often used as the as a pivot um, for these. Um, I've been to Flathome, a, the corresponding island um, in the Bristol Channel and there they were fitted with uh, disappearing Moncrief disappearing carriages. Um, Steep Home did not have that luxury. Um, so all, all, the, all the cannon would have been visible um, all the time. Um, this is split rock battery. So there are six um, of these coastal, coastal artillery batteries um, on the island. This one is split rock. Um, this is just on the, on the south side of the island. Uh, so yeah, we have the the two emplacements with the um, in barbette, as they were called, en barbette. Um, so that's what this this very nice curved um, mason stone wall around the outside is. Um, and and yeah, which, which is rather unique for um, steep home and flat home is most of the um, RML cannons are still in in place. Um, Certainly here, there, there's been no attempt to move them. They've been taken off the carriage. The carriage has probably been recycled, melted down, um, and the, the cannons are still there. Uh, this is, I've, I've sort of been hovering about, this is a, um, a 40 millimeter Bofors light anti-aircraft gun. Um, I, I don't think it was here originally. Um, there's, there's some controversy um, about whether Bofors were actually stationed on the island at all during the war, um, even though there are a number of emplacements that'll look like they were they were ready to accept um, both first there's, there's one here at Split Rock and then at I think it's a laboratory battery um, on the far side of the island um, there's another hold fast um, just between the two um, the two seven inch emplacements this battery as as they all do have subterranean magazines um, so we can actually get down and there's one magazine uh, per gun so there are two magazines here that we can go in and have a look at let me just turn the light on. We can descend below ground. So reasonably deep magazines. Um, they've got some nice um, slate on the floor and um, uh, red brick vaulted ceiling. But relatively small whenever we get inside the magazine itself. Um, brick lined with lots of ventilation. Um, we didn't want the, the propellant to get damp. Um, so there would have been a wooden floor, and we can see put it down here. Um, so the rough stone would have been below the floor level, and the red brick up above the floor level. Um, in, the, in the core, we can, we can see the ventilation under the floor, and then we see the ventilation in the walls. And we'll have a look upstairs, and we can see where that uh, that comes out. But yeah, relatively small magazine. And uh, would be a, a, a wooden door frame, um, probably with a wooden door, um, but with brass fittings. Um, it's very important in these magazines that there were no sparks that could have ignited the propellant. And if we look right down here at the floor, we can see that, that um, the very bottom of the door jams were, um, were these, these moulded brass fittings um, as well. This recess here, this was a lamp recess. Um, so there would have been a, an oil lamp placed in there with a glass door, um, same again with the brass fittings and that would, that would have provided light. And that would, would have been the only light source um, for, the, for the men working in the magazine. Um, this, another nice little feature, and, and we may see, depending on the length of the video, we can get to another battery. Um, this was the base of the Daffod um, crane. Uh, so this would have helped lift the, lift the ammunition up uh, to the guns and also back down again to load it, load it into the magazine. Um, so there are a couple of these remaining on the site. Um, which is rather special. Yeah, that was that was one of the magazines, and 
I said about the, the ventilation being important. So the holes along the top of the wall here, um, those, the, um, those channels inside the wall go down to the, um, to the vent inside the magazine, just to maintain uh, proper airflow, um, to make sure the damp doesn't set in and ruin the ammunition. Uh, if we go down, just while we're here, we go down the second, um, into the second magazine. Just because I always, I always think magazines are, are, are really quite interesting. So it's it's quite it's quite a, quite a long way to go. Um, you'll, you'll actually you'll, you'll notice this this chicane um, in the entrance where that was um, in the event of, of of battery coming under attack was to try and prevent um, a sort of blast and shrapnel coming into the magazine. But also it was it was a bit of a mitigation measure measure um, that if there was an accident and a fire or an explosion in the magazine, uh, that that didn't, um, didn't damage the battery at all. Now, in here, you hopefully see in the wall, um, so you'll see an area marked shrapnel. Um, this would have been the shell store, and this is where the shrapnel shells in this section um, would have been placed. And typically shrapnel shells for um, uh, sort of light, uh, probably sort of light, light wing ships or boats, but primarily for, for soldiers or troops out in the open um, in the field. And here, um, some more ghost riding. Um, um, and we have yeah, some, some column ammunition. So that was just a sort of standard steel case, high explosive um, column, column ammunition all along this wall. Um, some of, the, some of the, the ventilation holes have been, have been filled up here. Um, you can see on both sides, and the, the wood floor has been removed. But they've they've filled it with concrete. So this is this is probably a later addition, uh, most likely in the Second World War, when it was rearmed. And, and if indeed there was a, a light anti-aircraft gun mounted on the roof uh, between the two the two bar vents, uh, then this this could could have been a magazine. Um, they were essentially just making it a little bit more uh, robust. So yeah, this is the the first of six batteries on the the really unique Steep Home Island. Um, so this was split rock. So I'm going to keep walking around the island and I will uh, bring you back when I get to the next battery. See you soon. And this island never ceases. Right, so we're notching rudder rock battery. Uh, this was another 7 inch RML uh, Victorian battery. However, it was modernised in the Second World War um, quite extensively. Uh, the guns were removed Although I say removed, if you have a look inside, the gun was not removed, um, it was left here. So when they built this, the battery observation post for a twin six inch uh, coastal artillery battery on the hill behind me, um, they, just, they just left the gun. Um, they left the stonework, they left the barbette, um, and they, they just continued to, to build this observation post. Um, there's another one almost identical to this uh, at Breen Down. Um, so that, that sort of covers the, 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 the channel behind us up to this point and then this observation point looks across and you can see flat home um, in the sort of in the mid distance and then that's actually Cardiff um, in the far distance on the other side and Lavernock Point is the, uh, the little spit of headland which you, you won't be able to make out in this camera um, but that's just across so you know so you can see we've got Lavernock Point uh, with the battery, we've got flat home, steep home, and then bring down on the far side. So that was quite a formidable chain of defences um, across the Bristol Channel. Um, obviously, with um, with with Cardiff um, and Bristol being being very important um, trading ports, uh, they needed to be protected, as well as the, the shelter of the of the Bristol Channel itself. Uh, so yeah, we're in the, in the Second World War battery observation post uh, with. Because why not a, a seven inch RML buried under the floor? Now, if I take you around the front here, there's another interesting feature. Um, so, a, apart from the dead seagull, which there are a lot um, on this island, we have this in incredibly thick steel plating. Um, so, this was from a, an experiment in the 1880s, um, just experimenting with um, essentially steel, steel casemates and armour. Um, for uh, coastal artillery guns. Um, so th this was erected presumably around the, uh, the gun or the emplacement that was here 
and then um, it was subjected to um, to naval gunfire from a ship just out in the Bristol Channel. And yeah, and, and a, a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of armour um, that we can see has just been has just been shattered. So there's some some um, explosive damage here, um, some shrapnel damage. Yeah, so yet yet again another really unique um, part of history. Uh, this barbette then out, out the front, um, it's a little less overgrown, so we can we can see how um, how far down the um, the front of it comes. And this this would have been so when, when the cannon was mounted, so the um, so potentially the crews can get out here to to to, to clean the gun um, without having to without having to slew it all the way around. Um, although obviously when you're when you're under attack, you want to do that under cover as much as you can. Um, so yeah, this is this is rudder rock battery, and if I just take you uh, while we're here, there's another fascinating but also terrifying um, feature down here, and it's one of the searchlight emplacements, one of the Second World War searchlight emplacements. Um, whenever the island was refortified in 1941, um, and this this must have been a huge feat of engineering um, and logistics to get the equipment out here. Um, and to, to actually start constructing these steps, and I haven't I haven't seen um, steps or as much effort go into a searchlight uh, outside Orkney when I was there last summer. Um, some of those some of those searchlights with the with the coastal artillery battery up in the hill, uh, the searchlights were down as, as close to sea level as they could get. So yeah, this is rather treacherous. Um, there is another emplacement. Uh, on the other side of the island called 208 steps and it's so called because there are 208 steps leading down to it um, i'd like to think that was that was obvious and yeah so this one unfortunately there would have been a vertical steel ladder at the bottom which is rotted away so we can't actually get into this emplacement um although i'm not not quite sure i'd, I'd necessarily want to um it's it's a, a pretty terrifying descent and ascent and yeah, so this is um, Rudder Rock Battery. Yeah, that's number two of six. Um, there are two two magazines um, associated with the battery, dug into the hill behind. Um, but you know, I'm going to say they all they all look the same. So we're not we're not going to go inside these ones. And I'm I'm going to move around to Summit Battery, uh, which has been modified with uh, two six-inch coastal artillery guns in 1941. So I will. Sign off here, and I will see you at Summit Battery. Oh, well, it's called Steep Home Island for a reason. Rugged footwear and a desire to climb lots of hills are a must um, if you're going to visit. Then, uh, coincidentally, um, yeah, I'll talk about visiting. Um, so it costs uh, just under fifty pounds for a boat trip to get out here. Um, the boat leaves either from Cardiff Bay or Western Supermare, which is the one I got this morning. Um, for steep home, because they can only land at high tide, it's a minimum 12 hour trip just to work in between the two high tides. Um, that's plenty of time um, to look around the, um, the various features that are here. Um, I've come, this is October, um, sort of October the 11th. And yeah, it's not nesting season. There are no birds around. Um, but certainly if you come earlier in the year when it's nesting season, you will be bombarded um, with gulls and gull chicks. So anyway, this is Summit Battery. Um, there were two seven inch RML um, guns here, mounted just like the others in Barbette. Uh, I can, we, can, we, can see, um, we can see some of them in, in between. But then these, these um, bear moth emplacements for six inch Coastal artillery guns were constructed in 1941. Um, these um, these are uh, reasonably common around the UK. Um, six inch um, Mark Seven, I think, was sort of the British um, coastal artillery gun. Um, I may be wrong with the mark. Um, I wasn't prepared to try and give as many facts and figures. Um, otherwise, I'd have, um, have done some revision. Um, yeah, in, in, in remarkable condition. Um, these were, so the, the 1941 six inch emplacements on Steep Home were fitted with a, um, I think it was called a plastic roof, but essentially it was a um, sort of a, a, a polymer with, 
with bitumen and um, with a steel frame. And you can see lots of it down here. Um, so this was just to give some overhead protection um, from the elements, but also a little bit um, from, from incoming fire. So there you can see the sort of the bitumous material with the, um, with, with the sharp grit in it, um, as well as the, the, st the steel frame. Uh, there's only one of these still in place on the island, um, although it, it's, in, it's in pretty bad state, but hopefully we'll, we'll get to see that later. And yeah, so here's one of the positions. And if I take you around the front before we get into to all the goodness that sits, sits at the rear of these emplacements, um, we then see one of the seven inch RML emplacements here. Um, let's see them again with the, with the, the seven inch gun just, um, just left in position. And then we have the second um, 1941 six inch emplacement here. And same again, this would have had the um, that overhead protection on it as well. This one does appear to have been built over the seven inch RML position because they've, they've just pushed that down to one side. Um, yeah, and, and still here, and they would have been left with, you can see all the ammunition locker doors are still in position, in, in pretty bad state now, but they are still, they are still, are still um, intact, and more dead seagulls. Uh, this place would be crawling with thousands of gulls during breeding season, um, so I'm, I'm certainly glad I came um, outside breeding season. And out to the rear of the battery, uh, another hard standing for... Um, probably crew shelter, um, some sort of building here. Uh, lots of ironwork from these overhead um, protection, from the overhead protection. And here we have um, what's reasonably unique. I think I don't. I'm not quite. It must. This must have been removed um, when they built the 1941 emplacement. Um, but yeah, here we have one of the uh, one of the the rails for the uh, seven-inch RML mount. That would have gone there so you can see the complexity you can see how the and um, these foundation irons would have been would have been molded into concrete and um, to make sure there was no movement of vibration and but what is what is interesting here i mentioned about this um the little daffet crane still left with one of the magazines and here it is a really good um good chance to see see what it would have, what it would have looked like and how it would been used and it would have been a simple just pulley um pulley block, tackle, um, a fair and some rope, and the, the shells would have been hoisted up and down um, using that. Uh, let's have a look inside one of the magazines. I can just turn the light on again as we, as we descend into another, uh, into another magazine. So there we can see, this is, this is the block that we have in the other, the other magazine um, for the, the little, little hoist. And all made to an identical pattern. Um, here the floor has been filled with, with hardcore. Um, oh yeah, it's, as I say, um, pretty pretty identical. Uh, no no ghost writing markings on the wall this time. Uh, there's a little bit of graffiti um, up around here. Nothing nothing sort of contemporary. 90s, 9302, um, 1962. In some of the magazines that we we haven't gone into, um, there is some uh, 19th century graffiti here. Well, so yeah. here is the, yeah, the, the magazine uh, from the seven-inch RML guns at Summit Battery. Um, so called, it's the it's the highest battery. Uh, not quite the highest point on Steep Home, but it is the the highest battery uh, we have here. Right, so that's it from Summit Battery. That's number three of six. Uh, we'll keep walking around, and I will see you at the next one. So when we were climbing down the stairs of death the last searchlight emplacement I did mention there was one other called 208 steps so this is it this is these are the 208 steps leading down uh, to the searchlight emplacement on the north of the island so this one faces uh, flat home which you can see in the distance uh, the island itself is designated a site of scientific special scientific interest um, it's approximately one kilometer long by about 400 kilometers wide. Um, so I, th I think that, that works out about um, sort of 49 uh, square acres. So not, not that long. So the 12 hours visit you get here um, certainly does go a long way. Um, 
have it lots of time, it doesn't feel rushed. Um, I talked in the last bit about, about getting here, so that was, as I say, um, boat. It's a, it's essentially, it's a rib, um, which I got from Western Supermare. Uh, but you can also, the trips also run to Flat Home Island. Um, the Flat Home ones, um, it's easiest to get to from Cardiff Bay. Um, so I used Bay Island Voyages. Um, costs uh, sort of between 40 and 50 pounds. I think the Flat Home one is, is a bit uh, cheaper. Um, but the Flat Home trips only give you I think it's about four hours on the island, um, which is, isn't, isn't, I didn't think it was enough because obviously um, I, I probably want to go into a little bit more detail with some of these, um, some of these sites than, than others, certainly with just with taking photographs. Um, and I, yeah, I went during nesting season, so I was, I was attacked by gulls, I was hit in the head, um, I was pooped on, it wasn't, wasn't a great experience from the birds, um, but certainly uh, just as unique as as steep home um, really really fascinating place and I would I would recommend them both so 208 steps later we have the, uh, the the searchlight position on the north side and if I just if I just hold you over the edge here you know we're talking 100 foot cliffs um, how on earth this was constructed um, and the the formwork was put up for the for the concrete to be poured into um, absolutely phenomenal uh, not much left, the steel shutters have gone, the, the, the races along the bottom um, for the shutters have, have all corroded. Um, the usual sort of exhaust hole for the, for the fumes, searchlights were, um, had sort of tungsten or carbon rods which were, which were consumable. As the searchlight um, burned, um, it gave off the fumes, so those, those type of exhaust holes um, sort of indicate that it was, yeah, it, was a, it was a searchlight position as opposed to an observation post or, um, or something else. So this is, yeah, this is 208 steps searchlight position. Um, I'm not going to take you with me as I climb up the 208 steps. Um, that, that would just be uncomfortable for you um, and embarrassing for me. So I will see you at the next coastal battery. Oh, right, we are approaching battery number four of six. And this is laboratory uh, battery. Oh, I've just checked my phone. And even though the island is one kilometre long and 400 metres wide, I have managed to walk over nine kilometres today. Um, yeah, so I've done a few laps. I think that's fair to say. This is hopefully my last lap, just to record some some of this 360 video. Uh, right, yep, uh, laboratory battery. Um, probably called, um, not necessarily for any medical reason, uh, but in the Victorian era, a lot of a lot of forts and mobilisation centres had. Uh, what what were called laboratories in them, and they were essentially um, rooms or magazines for ammunition inspection, uh, repair. Uh, so it wasn't a it wasn't a scientific laboratory as such, but this may have been the battery, um, and there's certainly there's a wall behind us that that may have formed um, part of that or part of a blast wall. Um, yes, yeah, so this may have been where the um, inspection of ammunition. Um, took place because you know really once ammunition was on the island um, it wasn't it wasn't getting cycled over very quickly and um, just because of the logistical challenges and problems um, but anyway all that aside uh, here we have the first of two um, seven RML uh, positions exactly identical to the others um, this battery has suffered quite a bit from robbing of stonework um, and elsewhere on the island you can see where this stonework has been used. Um, for example, down where the uh, sort of where the dock is, where the boats come in, um, there's a lot of this, a lot of this very nice faced stone, which which just which doesn't fit, but it's been used to uh, uh, to to make the the, the wall of the jetty. Uh, whenever we were up uh, at the the Bofors gun on the other side of the island at Split Rock Battery, um, I said there was what is likely to be a, um, a light anti-aircraft or 40 millimeter buffers um, hold fast or position. And this is it. Um, yeah, so this is, this is possibly where, where a, a second buffers um, would have been mounted. And there, there is a third one that we'll, we'll come on to uh, further on round. And here we have the, the second position. Um, same again with, with uh, the, the seven inch. Uh, gun just uh, just abandoned there as the carriage was taken, but yeah, you know you, you can see heavily robbed um, of all the major stonework. You know that was that was no feat to get it here um, and have it carved. Um, 
and it wouldn't have been a, a terribly easy feat to, to strip it out and move it elsewhere on the island. Uh, remember, this is you know this is before the days of of uh, JCBs and dumper trucks everywhere. Uh, and this this you know we said right back at uh, split drop battery about the the air vents going in for ventilation for the magazine. Here you can see the as the the, the stone um, facing has been taken off. You can see the concrete and, and sort of rubble hardcore fill um, of the magazine walls. But you can also see the, the pipe work um, and the, the air vents um, that are around there. So I think if we go down to, there was one of these still had a, had a wooden floor. I'm hoping it's this one. Uh, these steps uh, have, have been replaced, concrete at some stage. They look modern, so they, they, they don't look Second World War, um, so they look, they look much different than that. But you can, you know, you can see the effect that this, this stripping off all the stonework um, has had. You can see sort of the slate and concrete um, window that would have been there to allow a little bit of natural light in. We've got some slate floors, and then as we as we make our way in, ah, so this is this has been concrete filled. Um, it looks, looks like a modern, modern fill of concrete. Um, so this may have been done in the seventies when the island was was taken over. Um, yeah, no, no ghost riding, nothing terribly interesting here. But, but you know, and ho hopefully you'll, you'll get the impression that all these magazines were were identical. Um, there was there was really no no difference um, in these at all. He ever saying that the, um, the little anchor stone for the um, for the David doesn't appear to be here. So it, it may have been in some of these upper courses because I think. Um, no, it's not. So yeah, that that seems to have been removed. If it if it existed at all, it may have been higher up. Um, yeah, I'm not. I, I can't explain that. Uh, so yeah, this is laboratory battery on the north side of the island. So we can just start to see um, Western Supermare in the distance there. And if we go back up on top of the hill, you can see Flat Home and Cardiff Bay um, in the distance. Right, so that's. Four of six ticked off. Uh, let's keep going and do the final two batteries on this special visit to Steep Home Island. Thankfully, not too far away from laboratory battery is Tombstone Battery. Um, so I think Tombstone was a single gun um, battery. There's only there's certainly only one gun on emplacement left now, and there's there's one magazine to the rear. Um, and yeah, just like the others, these have they've started to be robbed. Um, as I say, the harbour, which is down to my left, um, a lot of the stone went to. So it, it makes sense that the, the closest batteries uh, were robbed first um, before going back and touching um, touching the further ones. Um, so yeah, this is um, number five of six batteries. And let's have a look down in the magazine. You can see the lights, the light's starting to fade now. Probably got about an hour of use of a light and then the, the boat back to Western Supermare. Yeah, nice nice big entrance for this one. Um, coming down, and, you know, lots of lots of ventilation up here. Um, we've got the, the lamp recess with probably one of the biggest domestic spiders that I've seen. Actually, spiders don't, don't bother me too much unless they're on my head. Um, here, so we have what looks like shell store, um, ghost writing in the woodwork. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing much else for me. And this is, this is a, a pretty, pretty small magazine um, with another with a huge spider up there. So yeah, we have the, the shell store um, for this, this small single gun battery. And I mentioned this is possibly a third uh, boat first position, and that's actually on the roof of this magazine. Uh, so we should be able to get to it uh, if, my, if my little memory map is right. Just up here. Uh, and the, the beauty about Steep Home, um, you really do have the freedom, um, provided you respect respect nature and respect the reserve, um, you have the freedom to go, um, really to go anywhere and see all of these, all of these unique features. So yeah. We have the third um, light and the aircraft hold fast. As I say, I'm not, not sure if, um, if any Bofors were actually mounted here, um, just because, as I say, that's, it's, that's a report I read online. Somebody, somebody questioned, there was, they, didn't, they didn't think there was any evidence. Um, but certainly the hold fast is there. Um, 
it's unlikely they'd have they'd have gone to this trouble if they weren't um, if they weren't necessarily intending um, to put them there. However, as the situation, certainly with home defences and the war changed, um, there were a lot of uh, a lot of changes, a lot of things uh, that were planned but, but weren't actually um, completed or, or started even. So that is tombstone battery. Uh, that was five or six. So I now have one more uh, battery to show you and this is um, garden battery uh, which was modified in 1941 uh, with two six inch coastal artillery guns so i will see you at garden battery and number six of six this is garden battery so you can see just as we as we stand to the rear this is one of the the huge six inch coastal gun um, emplacements constructed in 1941 these concrete plinths at the side um, held the, the, the steel I-beam uprights for this, uh, for this sort of polymer roof um, that gave the crews a little bit of protection. Uh, but up, just up on the right, uh, we have one of the 7-inch uh, the uh, RML uh, Victorian emplacements. Um, same again, just identical to all the others with, with some, some incredible features remaining. Um, yeah, these are these are these are beautiful emplacements. Uh, this one has been so while the the barbette hasn't been touched, um, a lot of the the cut stone from the um, from the side walls has been removed, as I say, to go into the the construction of the harbour. And that that was robbed out during the 1941 um, upgrade of the island. Uh, this here, so this is a this was a rangefinder plinth um, for these guns. So if I if I lift you up. You should be able to see the, the three hole mounting uh, for the rangefinder on the top. So that, that was one of the 1941 um, additions. So let's actually go into this, this massive um, six inch gun emplacement. Um, and just, just like the others, so many of the original features uh, remain. So yeah, coming in. And yeah, we can see all the, all the steel doors for the ready use ammunition lockers. Uh, still in still in position, um, almost as if they were they were just they were they were emptied out um, when all the ammunition was removed and they've just they've just been there. Nature slowly um, starting to take over. I say slowly; it has been eighty years. Uh, what I think is in interesting for this one were some of the other batteries, um, as the uh, as the uprights for the overhead protection were removed. Um, they were just removed just for a sense of scrap and stop it falling down. But in this battery, they've been they've been filled again, so you can see you can see the cut marks uh, where it was removed. But then, as I say, they've they've been filled. Whether that was for some aesthetic purpose, or whether the overhead cover was used, um, oh sorry, was removed so the gun gun could remain in use. Given that the coastal artillery regiments were disbanded in 1956, um, so we still in this country um, had coastal artillery batteries, um, as I say, until until the 50s, until air power started to take over. Um, and that was really sort of the jet age. So yeah, here we have one of the one of the six inch emplacements. Uh, if I if I try to take you down to the other one, you have to forgive the little the little truck. So when this island was active, there was a uh, there was a lightweight um, narrow gauge railway. Um, in two places. One, in 1941, down at the harbour behind me, um, there was a, a, a tracks zigzagged um, up so supplies could be brought up, up onto the, the top part of the island. And uh, same, just in, about 100 metres in front of us, um, practically half the island away, uh, there was another railway with a winch um, that, that, that brought goods um, from a dock down there. So yeah, this is, this is the, the second um, uh, farm, uh, garden battery sorry, um, six inch gun emplacement, still with its 1941 overhead cover. So you can see what a mess it is now. It's, it's, it's just, it's unstable, it's unusable. Um, although there are photographs in the past of, of people walking in those, I think maybe from the 90s or early 2000s. But you can just see this, this sort of um, bitumous overhead cover is just, um, it's just softening in the heat, softening with age, um, and eventually just one by one they'll, they'll collapse, um, leaving the steel work to the elements, which is, it's just, just degrading. Um, so yeah, unfortunately this one's inaccessible. Um, and I think it's just deemed too dangerous by the by the trust who run the island uh, to let people in. So I'll, I'll obviously respect that. 
Um, so yeah, this was the second of the um, of the 1941 uh, six-inch coastal artillery emplacements at Farmhouse Battery. They call it Farmhouse Battery, um, or Garden Battery. I think it's Garden Battery. Um, yeah, so I think just a, a few more features while I'm here. Um, this would have been there were a number of engine houses. Um, I don't don't think this is one of them. This is probably the um, the battery store. I think those the windows and so on are um, are original. Maybe uh, crew room and so on, restroom for the um, for the battery. I should have read up before I, I tried to explain it to you. Um, and yeah, that's that's those are the the six. The six batteries of Steep Home Island, and certainly, uh, if you're if if you're available, if you if you can come out and, and do a tour, I would highly recommend it. Um, it is a it, it's a fascinating um, time capsule of um, of, of military history. Um, the Victorian uh, Victorian batteries, and then the later um, 1941 um, six-inch coastal artillery batteries. So if you, if you can get out here. Um, you know, and, and do do take heed of the warnings they they say about um, about it being uh, dangerous under food. You do need good food wear. You do need to be reasonably uh, mobile to get up. And um, it's quite you know those two hundred and eight steps from that cur that searchlight position. Um, you've a you've a longer walk to get up uh, just from where the boat leaves you off. Um, but certainly, if, if if you can make it, absolutely well worth the uh, well worth the trek. And yeah, sorry, just while while we're here, um, so this is. This is a winch, this is where the winch would have been, um, and, and straight in front of me where it says steep path. I'm not going to try and go down there with the camera because it is it's very steep and, and shingly. Um, I was down earlier, but we can, we can do it without, a, without both hands free. So yeah, there would have been a lightweight railway, um, there was a small small jetty for, for getting supplies on and off the island, um, and the, the carriages would have been winched, winched all the way up, um, using a winch here. So there's still remnants of the, uh, of the railway around, around the island. Yeah, well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm waffling on too much. Um, yeah, have a look at some of the other 360 videos on my channel. Hopefully, my content is developing, um, and I can start to build up a bit of a bit of a following and just share my passion and enthusiasm for um, primarily uh, sort of British home front defences. Um, coastal artillery, in particular, um, is one that um, that I really do enjoy. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video of Steep Home Island in the Bristol Channel. Don't forget to like, subscri subscribe. Um, and tinkle that bell for notifications, and I will see you in the next video.